So uh, 20, 2012, 2013, I had a New Year's Eve party. I had just recently gotten divorced, just like that 2012. So I finally had my house back to myself and I wanted to have a killer party, so I did. And uh, I invited, it was just, it was, I, lived in, I was living in Studio City. And I, I don't know how the party just kind of got out of hand and like just people started finding out, out, of, out about it and just showing up at the house. And, but anyway, at midnight, uh, John Favreau was DJing. Bruce Buffer from the UFC did the countdown. You looked at the bar and Ted Lange, Isaac from the Love Boat, the bartender, was standing. At, and he wasn't bartending, but he happened to be standing behind the bar at that time. And I remember I was like, holy shit, this is so wild. And uh, and then Amber Lynn, this porn star that I used to jerk watch in the uh, 80s, she was there. Then I turn around, Eric Benet shows up and Smooth B was there. Uh... If you watched Entourage, my friend Marlon Young was there. He, he showed up. Um, he was, uh, what was his name on Entourage? Rufus. He was the short black guy. He was, he was Vince's, like, AV guy. He had a really dark voice. He had a sharp voice. Vince, you fucking idiot. You got to buy this TV. You know, he sounded like that. <clears throat> and then uh, Damon Wayne. I went outside because somebody said the, the cops were here. So I went out to go calm the cops down. But I was hammered. And Damon Wayne's junior... He's walking up my driveway and I go, hey, Marlon. He goes, dick. <laughs> and then I went out to the cops and I was like, hey, do you want me to shut the party down? They're like, no, no, you're fine. We just can't have all these people parking on the street. I go, and I'm trying to get my party to end. I'm like, no, seriously, if you want me to shut the party down, I'll shut it down. He goes, no, no, you can keep going. I go, why don't you just tell me to shut the party down so I can get everybody out of my fucking house? And me and the cop became friends after and he would just hit me up randomly. Hey, when are you performing? When can I hang out? That was a pretty good time. So that, that, that was 2012 to 2013. Then later on that year, uh, in September, I was turning 43. And I remember when I was married, I had the worst 40th birthday you could ever have. And I, it's, it was, first of all, it was my first time being married. We'd only been married a month at the time. I'm turning 40. It's a big deal. She didn't have a fucking cake. She didn't even say happy birthday to me. She was a real piece of shit that day, that woman. Uh, so I, I just remember how it was the worst birthday party, birthday I'd ever had. And I was telling this girl that I was seeing earlier that year that I had a really shitty birthday. She was like, why don't you just have it again? Why don't you just do your 40th over? And I'm like, oh, yeah, who says you can't do that? So I had this party in New York, and I called it the redo, um, where I redid my 40th birthday. Uh, let's see, uh, Boogie Blind was there. DJ Scratch played. Um, Spin Bad. Uh, uh, Eric B. came by. Big Daddy Kane performed. Melly Mel and Grandmaster Kaz hosted the night. Bumpy Knuckles performed, uh, Nice and Smooth, Slick Rick, Dana Dane. I know I'm forgetting people because there was so many people there that night, but it was, oh, now Rogers came and hung out. It was fucking dope. And you would think I would have gotten laid that night, but I drank too much and it would have been no good to nobody. It would have been like trying to shoot a, trying to, trying to dig a hole with a rubber shovel, you know? Trying to shoot pool with a rope. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going nowhere, guys. Well, here's a wild tour story. When I was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada one night, um, no names will be given. See, wild tour stories with a comic is not not that wild for us. You know what I mean? It's just it's just kind of whatever. We're it's such a different world than like a musician's life or a rapper's life or a DJ's life. It's just literally like you know, here's the difference between a, a, a musician and a comedian. When a musician's on stage, girls are like fuck me, fuck me, and when a comedian's on stage, the girls are like fuck you, fuck you. So it's it's very different. It's similar but different. Um, it's not until you get into like rock star status that you can have the good stories. And, you know, sometimes you get those good stories. We have a threesome here and, a, and whatever, that, you know, whatever kind of like I had a threesome once and this this girl was uh, there's two chicks. OK, so one's blowing me and the other one is uh, like I'm finger banging her, making out with her and stuff. Right. You can be this graphic, I guess. People are going to hate me after this anyway. The girl blowing me is going Hur. And I'm like, all right, calm down, lady. I know what my dick looks like. It's not a fucking gagger, all right? Um, I piss on my own nuts. How are you gagging on that? So she's like, hur, hur. and all of a sudden she goes, hur. and then she just gets up and runs to the bathroom. And then the girl right here goes, you didn't come, did you? And I go, uh, no. And I look down and she puked all over my dick. 
Like I look down, there's literally cocktail onions like right by my balls. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking nasty. So she ran into the shower and then I jumped in the shower right behind her and, she, and I'm washing off. And I was mad, but my dick was still hard. So I just fucked her right in the ass in the shower. And I was like, that says more about her than it does me because it slid right in. And I'm like, wow, that's your ass. How's your asshole loose? How the fuck did that happen? What, what church did you go to?